Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Ben, and this is part five, I'm pretty sure, to our Risk of Flame tutorial. And last time we left off, I was just finishing up this three-shot sprite where our player shoots, fires three times with this image, and we're ready to use that. So, first of all, I'd like to say this video is going to be a little shorter. Second of all, I'd like to say that I'm uploading another video today, which is going to be a tutorial on particle systems. And I'm going to do a whole series on particle systems, teaching how to use different kinds of particle systems. The other one I'm uploading today is going to be really simple. So be sure and check that one out as well, because we'll actually use particle systems in this game. And it's going to be a good video. I've put quite a bit of preparation into making sure that it's easy to understand. And if you've never used particles before, great because this is going to be the video for you so also I was talking with one of my friends who is also a viewer and he suggested that I do the sprite artwork before um, I didn't mean to do that he suggested that I do the sprite artwork before I before I start the video and so I was kind of torn but I'm going to start doing sprite art tutorials anyways so I'll have a whole separate series with sprite art tutorials where I'll teach you how to do sprite art and animation. And in this one what I'll do is I'll do I'll draw the sprite beforehand and then when we come in and start it I'll show you what sprite I drew and I'll you can pause on all of the different frames if you want to kind of copy it. I'll step through it just really fast but I don't want to spend a lot of time sitting and drawing sprites every time because it gets a little tedious and you guys are here, you want these videos to be fast, you want to get as much information as possible, and if I'm too fast, you can pause it. So that's the way I'm get, that's going to be my motto for these videos, I'm going to try and keep them fast. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's actually start on the game. So uh, we're going to want to create a new object, and we're going to call this Object Player 3 Shot, and we're going to give it our 3 Shot player sprite. Now we're going to come into our player and we're actually, oh he's got a depth, set this to negative one, um, his depth to negative one, and set this one to negative one as well. So that our player's in front of everything. And what I'm going to teach you here is a trick that is called modularization, and I already told you a little bit about it, and it also uses parenting. So, but what modularization is, is it's any time where you can separate your code where the code is kind of separate from itself but it works together and this is one way of doing it in GameMaker using multiple objects I'm not gonna say it's the best way of doing it but I am gonna say that it is a very simple way of doing it it can reduce the amount of code that you have to do quite a bit and simplify things quite a bit so that's what we're gonna do so the first thing we want to do is we want to come into our player and we're going to add a new event and I'm going to delete this event real quick because that's the event that we want to add. <laughs> so we're going to add a new event and we're going to call it, we're going to do a key press and we're going to do letters and then we're going to do the C key. So I'm going to use the C key to do to to shoot and you can use whatever you want. Now what we're going to do in this code is we're going to use a function called instance change. Now this is a beautiful little function that changes one object into another object, but you keep all of the properties from the object from before, which is nice. We need that. So we're going to do instance change and then we're going to do object player 3 shot. And this is where you determine whether you want to perform the new object's create event and we do not want to perform the create event. So set this to false. We're also going to change, before we do this, we're going to set a new image speed. Image speed equals, I think I did point, point 0.6 or point 0.7. Let's go with point 0.7 and see what happens. And okay, so now when we press the key, the key press event, we're gonna change into our new object and you can actually see this in the game you 
you can run around, but if you press C, he'll actually pull out the gun and fire. But look, he doesn't ever change back. He, you're kind of stuck there and he just keeps firing. So uh, that looks kind of fast to me too. I'm going to change that to... Uh, oops. It's in our, I'm going to change that image speed to 0.5 because that was firing kind of fast. So what we're, what we're going to want to do is in our new object, we're going to add a new event and do other and do animation end. And what do you think we're going to do when the animation for him firing completes? Well, we're going to change back. Instance, change, object, player, false. We do not want to run the create event again. Because we want to keep all of the properties from before. We want to keep the same health, the same whatever we had before. We want to keep that. So, let's try that one more time and make sure we can change back now. You can see he runs, fires three times, changes back. You can also see that even if I'm facing left, it actually changes into the right image automatically because it passes those properties into the new object, which is just super cool. But it's also it also has a drawback. Watch this. I'm going to jump and I'm going to fire. I'm going to shoot. What happened? I fell through the ground, right? So let me tell you what happened. What happened was we passed the gravity property, but this object doesn't have a collision event. So now I'm going to teach you how parent objects work. So come into your object 3 shot and grab, well actually I don't want to do parenting for this case. I've decided it's, it's not going to be a good spot to use it. So psych, we're not going to do parenting right in this uh, exact moment. So just grab this um, collision event that we've got here with the code, copy it, just do control C, come into here, add a collision event with the solid object and just paste that code in. This is what that code looks like. Just move contact solid v speed equals zero and that should fix this. That was not a good time to use parenting but I'll show you parenting because I can't explain enough that parent objects are just amazing so. Maybe it was a good time to use parenting actually. And the reason is because the view. If you notice, the view didn't follow the player. So, double psych, we're actually going to use parenting. So delete this collision event. And in your object player 3 shot, give it a parent of the object player. So now what will happen is every single property that the player has, create event, everything, all of that is going to pass into this object now. So you can just pretend that if you open up this code, see all of this code right here? All of this code it now applies to this object as well. And all of the other objects that are tracking this object also track this object and what I'm talking about is our view. So now our view will follow this object as well just automatically. Because to the view, these are the exact same object. That's what parenting does. But we're going to run into some issues and I want to show you the issues because visually I think it's better to learn that way. Show you the issues that we're going to run into. First of all, now if we do, uh, you can see if we press C, we, uh, you can't even see it but we, can, um, we can't change into our image anymore. And that's because what is happening is this player's step event is overriding our our three shot player. So what you want to do is we only want this to carry through and the view to follow us. So what you can do is you come into here and if you give it its own event it will no longer do the event of its parent. So we're going to put a we're going to put a step event in here. And I'm just going to do a comment that says this cancels the step event. Well, let's do the event of the parent. 
So now this object will no longer do the parent step event because it has its own. And that's one of the beautiful things about parenting and the best thing to do is when you build an object that controls everything for you and then you just pass different variables into it with parents and that is really cool. So uh, with create events. So let's, uh, let's add another one. Let's do our C key because we don't want this one to be able to fire. Key press, letters, C key, and we'll just copy that same code that was in the step event and put it in here. And we'll do one more. Well, I guess the create event doesn't really matter. So, because we're not running it anyways. So let's save and try running this and see what happens because I think that should fix everything for us. Yep. So you can see we can run, we can fire, and everything is looking pretty awesome um, except that we don't actually create the bullets. But this video has already gotten pretty long, so and parent objects are pretty complicated. I want to do that other video for you. So thank you guys for watching. I'll do the next one tomorrow morning. I'm super excited for it. We'll create the bullets. We'll start working on an enemy. And uh, make sure and like and favorite this video. You guys have been awesome so far. I really love making these YouTube tutorial videos. I hope they help. And uh, I just... It's been super exciting for me to go through this experience of creating a YouTube account and basically in like two months, I went from no subscribers to I'm coming up on 700, I think, or maybe I passed 700. I don't even remember. So thank you guys. You're super awesome. And I will talk to you guys later.